A smartphone is the number one type of camera sold in this world right now. Because of this fact, we all love creating memories and while it is not the best way, it is definitely the most accessible way to do it, creating memories on a smartphone. So it's not a surprise that companies keep pushing the limits of smartphone camera technology. Now the cool thing about camera technology is that it goes beyond the limits, beyond the limits of human vision that is. For example, our eyes cannot see in the dark and our eyes cannot zoom from a stationary place. Our eyes also cannot go as close as some macro lenses or our eyes just cannot create art, telling stories and pictures. The crazy thing is in 2019, you can do all of these things with something in your pocket. Huawei announced its latest version of this kind of a device the smartphone camera, the P30 Pro, which uh, is the P series of uh, Huawei, which is completely focused on the photography and videography aspect of the smartphone. And this was announced yesterday. It uses a fundamentally new sensor that can see in the dark. It has a crazy telephoto lens that can do up to 5x of optical zoom. Like we saw on the Mate 20 Pro, it can go really, really close with its super wide angle lens as well. And on top of all of this, software enables some really crazy things so that you can create your art. So I'm really, really excited about this new camera. The Huawei P30 Pro is definitely pushing boundaries in terms of hardware and software. Lots of new things to talk about and that's what this video is all about. Before we start, do hit that subscribe button and the bell icon next to it so that you don't miss any of our videos. It really helps us. So do consider subscribing. Let's begin with the story. It all started when Huawei announced their partnership with Leica. Leica is a very serious camera company. It's a German company manufacturing cameras, mainly point and shoots for a really long time. They have huge legacy. And what this partnership meant was Huawei was serious about cameras as well. This was way back in 2016. We really saw the results started showing up when P20 Pro was launched last year. That was one of the first ever triple camera systems in the world, on a smartphone, of course. But that was not the only first. They were also one of the first to use AI-based optical image stabilization and algorithms to create a night mode, which worked really great. And they also had the hybrid 5x zoom and they had ISO up to 1 lakh. Now, all these things were kind of very new and set the trends for smartphone cameras in 2018. Then we saw the Mate 20 Pro, which replaced the monochrome sensor with the RGB one and put a wide angle lens on top of it. The P30 Pro improves on the P20 Pro and also borrows the super wide angle lens from the Mate 20 Pro. So this is how the setup is like on this device. The main sensor is a 40 megapixel unit and it has a 27 millimeter wide angle focal length with f1.6 aperture lens. The secondary unit is a 20 megapixel sensor, the same as the Mate 20 Pro, ultra wide angle lens with 16 mm focal length and f2.2 aperture. And then the tertiary lens, it has a 5x optical zoom, 125 millimeter focal length, aperture of f3.4 and megapixels is 8. So these are the main shooting units and there is also an additional 3D time of flight sensor which is obviously used for depth sensing and 3D mapping and so on. The sensor is a square slab full of photo sites. Those are called pixels, right? So if you zoom in and see the array of pixels, the arrangement of pixels, it is fundamentally arranged in this way. There are two green pixels and one red and one blue. RGBG or RBGG, you can call it any way, but this is the fundamental arrangement of the array of pixels. So when you take a photo, what happens is that the two green pixels capture the luma of the image, which is like brightness. And the red and the blue pixels capture the saturation of the image, which is also called chroma. So this luma data and chroma data, they are gathered by the sensor and algorithms which are built into the sensor they work to 
go through a process called demosaicing. So what they do is that they interpolate each pixel and they try to understand which color it is. So they interpolate it meaning they approximate the pixel color and as a result you get a full rich colorful image. This whole flow was developed by a guy called Bryce Bayer who worked at the Eastman Kodak company and this is pretty much the technology that is being used across all the other sensors except for the P30 Pro of course. Now if you want to learn more about this kind of an arrangement, how, how an image is processed, how an image is taken, how the whole workflow works, we will definitely do a different explainer video on it. If you like to see it, do hit the comment section and let us know what you would like to see. Now the P30 Pro sensor is different in a very important way. Instead of the green pixels, Huawei has used yellow pixels. So instead of RGBG, it is RYBY or RBYY or RYYB, anything. So Huawei claims that using these yellow pixels, uh, it combines red and green as a combination of colors and gets more than 40% of light inside the sensor when compared to a traditional RGBG sensor. That's uh, quite a claim and it can also be corroborated with the quantum coefficient of uh, the yellow pixel. The yellow pixel is better at gathering light. So that's quite true. This also completely changes the way the image is processed because there needs to be a rewrite of the algorithms and possibly uh, a rewiring of the ISP as well. So this is entirely new what Huawei has done and we don't know what the results are like because of the change in sensor. Maybe when we compare it with the P20 Pro which has a RGBG sensor, maybe we'll know because that's a very similar sensor. Just now the pixels have been switched to yellow and uh, let's see what kind of a different it gives. But this promise is all about gathering more light, right? In addition, there's going to be more light thanks to the larger f1.6 aperture and not only that on the sensor level it is called a super sensitive sensor this one while the p20 pro did 1 lakh iso this phone can do 4 lakh iso now it might seem like whoa not even professional cameras can do it but the problem with dense sensors is that there will be a lot of noise if you go to that iso but since the sensor can do 4 lakh iso even at 50,000 ISO or 20,000 ISO, which is still really crazy for smartphones, you will get much lesser noise because the floor of uh, noise, the threshold of noise is so high that the noise will be really low at comparably high ISOs. So that's one really unique thing about this sensor, the super sensitive sensor on the P30 Pro. To demonstrate this, Huawei showed off some crazy samples. Now forget the other brands, ignore the other brands because we all know it is possible to get comparable results using software techniques or increasing the ISO. One thing that you cannot compare is f1.6 and the ISO threshold of 4 lakh. So definitely the P30 Pro is way ahead in terms of light sensitivity. They have conveniently ignored the Pixel 3 which has night sight so that's conveniently ignored but still if you go by these samples it is very clear that the p30 pro is way ahead they also showed some astrophotography that is like you cannot just do it on even you know low-end dslrs struggle really hard to do astrophotography so if what they claim is true definitely they are pushing the limits of smartphone photography. The next crazy new technology that we have seen only in prototypes, especially from a company called Oppo, which has shown us prototypes from last year, 5x optical zoom and recently they showed us 10x optical zoom. Uh, but Huawei has leapfrogged them into the market with the P30 Pro because it has a very similar periscopic optical zoom arrangement you get the 8 MP full quality of the sensor at 5x. That is a lossless optical zoom, right? 
So that's the most important part about the periscopic arrangement. And as you can see, it's got a square prism at the at the lens. So what this does is it reflects light onto a horizontal plane of lenses, which has a really high focal length. It needs a lot of space. So it takes a lot of space horizontally inside the phone and thus you will get 5x of optical zoom. Remember the Nokia N93 that's from way back that had 3x optical zoom. So imagine a miniature version of it. It's going to be really crazy if they rip apart this phone and show us how it actually looks like inside. But this 5x optical zoom if you think that's not good enough there is 10x hybrid zoom similar to the P20 Pro and if you think you want to push that slider even further there is 50x digital zoom and what's crazy is that this arrangement has OIS the main sensor also has OIS so there is dual OIS in action and this 50x zoom can actually give you readable text at full zoom that's like pretty good details of lines at least at least lines maybe you won't get uh, details like uh, really fine details like trees or people or I don't think that is possible but at least large text if you can see that with the 50x hybrid zoom that's quite commendable and pretty crazy if you think about it in addition to this you have the super wide angle lens at 16 mm and the main feature of this lens it it can go really really close like 2.5 centimeter close and you can take like macro shots which are not possible on other smartphones which require at least 5 to 7 centimeters of distance and then there is the time of flight sensor as well this 3d depth sensor the main feature of it as you have seen with other devices is that it has a huge range so it can go uh, really long in terms of depth it's not uh, 2 meters or 5 meters like the traditional depth sensing cameras like 5 megapixels or 2 megapixel depth sensing cameras they can't do high resolution 3d mapping but time of flight sensors have a different kind of technology that can do high resolution 3d mapping again if you want a video on this do let me know in the comment section below so with these cameras you get not only multiple focal lengths you get really good stabilized video as well and great dynamic range both in photos and videos with AI HDR plus which merges you know multiple frames and creates that super high dynamic range pictures and videos. So this all adds up to one thing. It lets you compose and create art to tell stories the way you want. That's what it is. This is the promise of the Huawei P30 Pro lots of freedom to create your stories and backed by crazy new technologies pushing the limits of what's possible in a smartphone that's what this device is all about but this is a promise will the huawei p30 pro live up to its promises is something that we'll have to wait and watch and that we will we will definitely get hold of the smartphone and test it out to see if all these promises translate to reality. Until then, I'd love to keep talking about all this new technology. And if you like to talk back to me, have any comments, any suggestions, any questions, do put them in the comment section below. And if you like these kinds of videos, definitely drop a like and also again, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to get notified of all our videos. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.